Have you ever gone to a fancy new restaurant with a significant other? This restaurant is so fancy. Or even possibly, dare I say it, a first date. And dare I say they're also a car person and you're trying to impress them because you found a place that, you know, has cloth napkins, okay? And small candles that are real candles, not the fake battery candles in the middle of each table. It's very nice, very moody, okay? You get handed a menu and as you're trying not to panic sweat. It, it seems my antiperspirant has failed. You look at the options of what you can actually buy and nothing, absolutely nothing makes sense on that actual menu. Illiteracy. You know, what does that word even mean? The ingredients are barely in English and you're not entirely sure what a souffle is or why durian is so expensive. What the f <laughs> And they don't even explain it to you, they just tell you what it is and then when you ask what it is, they look at you like you're an idiot. What are you? An idiot sandwich. At that point, you might as well just go to Taco John's. It's way better in almost every single way. There are times where picking out a car can be a little bit just like that feeling, despair, and just sadness. We used to play Care Bear. <laughs> I'm Alex, Alex at FI on Instagram, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to pick out your first car, especially when it comes down to you looking to throw some mods at the thing, and also, also, not making your parents sad. <laughs> And if you're just tuning in, hello, welcome to Fitment Industries. We build unreliable cars and tell you to pick up your wheels, tires, and aftermarket suspension from Fitment Industries because it's kind of what we do. And we've done it for three and a half years and we've gotten pretty good at it and we got a wheel wall behind us, which definitely adds validity. Plus, we have a thick gallery with over 40,000 vehicles. If you'd like to see what wheels fit for your car, you can enter in your year, make, and model, and you can find what others, hundreds of thousands of enthusiasts have fit. That math doesn't line up. But you actually can go check it out. If you do have an aftermarket car, we do recommend, and we do ask, go add it to our gallery, fitmanindustries.com forward slash add. Thank you, two Ds. When you're picking out your first car, you have like a couple two tree options that you're gonna pick out immediately. You're gonna go right to it because you know exactly what you wanna buy. And those are all gonna be absolutely terrible options. Why? Because you want something cool. You don't want it practical and you're gonna probably pay way too much in insurance because anything you do is gonna be the ones that you shouldn't buy. You're looking at photos of the 370Z and you just wanna buy it when you're 17. So in that spirit, we are going to keep the choices focused around practical, reliable, usable cars that also look pretty damn good with some like wheels or coilovers, okay? And we're also gonna kind of focus, focus on the overarching theme on how to pick one out. Makes sense? I hope so. And before we jump into it, drop a comment below on what cars you think we're gonna talk about so we can see if we're in sync. It's gonna be me. It's kinda weird. When you're going to pick out your first car, you need to set some sort of ground rules for yourself. So number one, the biggest thing that you're gonna wanna set is quite honestly, a budget. Now, I'm not going to say go with a monthly payment because the inner old life of the banking world that I used to be in would absolutely freak out. So set a dollar amount limit and then the limit above that as your hard stop is what we're gonna call it. Trust me, here's a great example. If you have a $5,000 budget, but a hard stop at $6,000, that means that you're gonna keep looking at cars at five grand, you almost always look good for the budget versus some days deciding that six grand is your budget for another days that seven grand is your budget when really only $4,000 is all you can afford. Then once you actually decide what your mid and your top layer is, you can break it into monthly payments and ensure that you can handle that if you are going to finance. But the biggest thing with budgeting is that people have a tendency to forget about taxes, title fees, licensing, insurancing, and even storage which are all actually pretty expensive. These are all things that cost money. And like my favorite RevOp manager would say, it's a leaker if you don't know that you're spending $130 a month on insurance. So when you set that budget, give yourself an extra $100 a month in insurance, 10% of whatever you're buying the car for in fees and taxes. And then let the rest go to the budget to pick up your first car. Google Sheets is gonna be king for this. And a lot of times people have a tendency to just over simplify how much they wanna spend on a car. They save five grand, they go spend five grand and they realize that they have to go spend seven once they actually get the car in their driveway. Also, also, if you plan on modifying a car with wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to know what you want to save for that. If you have $10,000 as a budget, go spend six grand on the car, give it another $600 in tax, title, and licensing, $400 in random junk that you're gonna buy for the car that probably won't even work because you get excited and you go on eBay, and then actually have $3,000 left over for wheels, 
tire suspension, probably an intake and an exhaust, and voila, you've still stayed within budget without actually worrying about whether you can go to college in the fall or not. These are all really important things because the more you prepare, the less you're gonna be surprised at the cost of stuff. Number two would actually be breaking down what you want. First cars are really dangerous. My first car was a baby blue 1989 Mercedes-Benz 300E with a dark blue leather interior, blocky wheels, and a button in the center console that made head the headrest in the back go down and I would press it to freak out my friends, but the button didn't actually put them back up, it only took them down. It was kind of a weird thing that Mercedes did, but that's okay. However, the first car I picked to own was a 1994 Mitsubishi 3000 GT SL, red manual front wheel drive, baby. Why? One. I was 17. Two, VR4s were expensive. Three, because it only had the V6 naturally aspirated engine, which made my insurance quote much cheaper. And four, because I wanted to be like Paul Walker in the prelude between Fast and Furious 1 and the second Too Fast, Too Furious, okay? I loved that car. I still do. <clears throat> if anybody's selling one, hit me up. But boy, was I somewhat sad when I had to store it and take out a Chevy Lumina, all right? that had naturally created air conditioning because the rust was so bad on the driver's side footwell that I had to put a blanket in front of it or my feet would freeze in the wintertime. That was not necessarily the best decision ever. And if I could go back, miles per hour, I would have probably picked something out that I could enjoy all year round because I only had the availability for one car when I was in high school. And if you live up north, you may need to think about if you'll need all-wheel drive. If you travel a lot, you may need to talk about or think about if you'll need four doors over two. And if you don't have a lot of time on your hands to play around with something, you're not gonna wanna go with something that's overly complex, like a BMW that's been owned by more people than Macklemore's jacket. When you do decide to do these things, write them down. Really understand what you need out of a car before deciding what you want to go buy. What you'll start to do is figure out what are the key things you need your car to do, what your car will have to do to match your lifestyle, and then what price point you can actually afford for this vehicle. And if you have the budget for what you're dreaming about, then it all kind of ties around full circle. This is a lot of times where you start to see people pick up a lot of common, easy wins. That's why a lot of people love the Subaru WRX. That's why a lot of people have a tendency to love the Honda Civic Si, because it does meet a lot of those ticket items that most people need as their one and only only car. Then last but certainly not least, research, research, research. Now, I know you want a Ford Focus ST, but if you don't understand what the differences in are in the trim options between the ST1 versus the ST3, you may end up questioning your life choices when you pick up an ST1 and you don't get the fancy six disc auto changer. There are so many buying guides out there in the world on the internet that you can become an expert pretty much in any single platform in like two to five days. If you really want to become a keyboard warrior, they have made it tremendous easy to do so, especially on Facebook. Facebook groups can be tough, but you can because there's so much resource out there and so many things that you can learn. And if you get past that grueling process of understanding every car you want to buy, you will truly know if you love that car or not. The reason I bought my very own C5 A6 when I was 18, which was a 2001 at the time, was because it was a larger B5 S4 without the bro tax of the early 2010s. 2007 liter twin turbo, and it's still had the six-speed uh, manual transmission for only $6,500. actually got it for $6,200. Whereas the B5S4 with the same miles was going for $17,000 at the same time. Thank you, Adam Raw. okay? Do your research and work what's best for you. There's a lot of times where you're gonna find cars like that, cars that almost are the same thing, but on different platforms. And lastly, if you've done everything above and you're still convinced that you want an E46 M3 as your first car, even though you live in Wisconsin and you're okay with a rebuilt title and you're okay with 210,000 miles, which is fine, then simply be patient. Right now the world is buying things it's, it's a rough okay, time. The bid is at $44 million now. Okay, especially in today's day and age, buying things is just absolutely terrible. Houses are overpriced and the new ones are made like a house of cards. Blitzes, for some reason, are still six grand because people will pay it. And for some reason, used car lots aren't filled with used cars. The shortage is really causing a weird moment in the market that has almost everyone overpaying for things when it comes to things people want, not necessarily things that people need. And that E46 is in the formula as well. Most used car prices will be a bit high and you should not let that mean or let that make you overpay for a car if you do not need it. 
$8,000 for a 240SX shell makes me cry when you can get a 350Z with an LSD for six. Mark IV Supers are awesome, but when they cost about as much as a fully specced out brand new M2 competition, it's just a lot for the badge. Don't fall for peer pressure traps because if it's your first car, the odds of there only being one beat the shit E46 in the United States is pretty low. So you don't need to buy that one. Just be patient. You'll probably find another one and you won't have enough money left over to pay the insurance bill in, in all honesty. Buying your first car is a little bit of a stressful situation. If you do have your parents helping you, great. And if you don't, that's okay too. But in your life, there's usually gonna be a mass amount of pressure for you to try to find something that is not boring or lame. You'll have friends that will pressure you to getting the highest spec option car you want because testosterone. You learn it in health class. And the internet will tell you that no matter what you get, you got the wrong thing because internet. Try to stick with what you learn, what you know, what you like, and what's reasonable. And a lot of times you're just gonna realize that no matter what, there will always be a group of people that weren't really happy with the pickup anyway. The reason so many people often pick up the cars that I mentioned before, in addition to vehicles like the Audi A4 Quattro, the Volvo S60, or the SN95 V6, is because it's what's worked for them. And it's a good car. It's a car that did a lot of stuff without necessarily going to break the bank as a first car. And sure, an STI would be sick, or an RS5 or a V70R or a Type R or a Cobra. But this is your first car, and that's probably not where you're gonna wanna go just yet, all right? If you're gonna hit a curb, hit a curb with your $3,000 Mustang. The only thing you'll end up hurting is, quite honestly, your ego and maybe your wheels. In which case, don't forget to check us out over at FitmanIndustries.com, where we have everything for your first car or your 15th car. Let us know what your first car was below as well. And of course, I'm Alex from Fitman Industries, and we will see you later. Peace.